All right. I'm going to be interviewing my dream job person. His name is Marcel Joseph. Hey, this is Marcel. Hey, Marcel. Uh, how are you? This is Jordan Weller. From, uh, hey, Jordan. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for taking uh, 20 minutes to talk to me today about uh, about your path to uh, where you are today um, with Warner Music. Um, so pretty much just a little debriefing about what this project is. Um, I'm in an entrepreneurship class. Uh, it's part of, for part of my major um, for for uh, the business school here at Syracuse, and. Uh, so we're engaging in a semester-long project. It's called Triple Me, and pretty much the whole idea of the project is to look back on um, your past and look back on like your childhood years, and you know, just kind of how your traits and characteristics were developed. So you, I was supposed to interview, um, you know, my siblings, my parents, grandparents who kind of watched me grow up, and then we move on into stage two, which is kind of like where you are today and how you're applying these skills and traits and characteristics to your everyday life and uh, to kind of moving on to part three, which is where you want to go and uh, how you're going to create that path for you as um, you know you move into post-college and you start your career and all of that. So the first question I have for you is, um, what were you like as a student in high school and in college? And did you know that you were interested in the music business during those years of your life? Yeah, so I would say um, I was a pretty good student. Um, you know, it was like top 10% of my class when I was in, in high school. Definitely. Um, I, you know, took AP classes and things of that nature. It was an honors program. And um, that was high school. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I... I guess in college, I, you know, I went to Columbia undergrad. Uh -huh. um, I probably laid back a little bit on terms of my academic achievement. That's I was right. less concerned about, you know, getting the highest grades, if you will. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it did, did perform well enough. And then also was just kind of focused on having a well-rounded experience of being in New York City. Yeah, and absolutely. making sure I was taking advantage of all the opportunities that that gave me. Um, so... Uh, I mean, to answer your next question, um, I mean, the, I, the other difference, I guess, is in high school, I was more active, I would say, in, in you know, clubs and yeah, organizations. Absolutely. Um, in college, I was less active. I think part of that was because I started interning pretty early or working pretty early right. and, and kind of focused on um, getting to the next step in my career. Definitely. Um, and then the, to answer your question about uh, music, did I know that I want to work in the music industry? No. Um, uh, it's not even something I had really even considered. Yeah. Um, I kind of landed in it, if you will. Um, after my junior year, kind of making that decision. I think prior to that, I mean, I, I always loved music. I, you know, created music. I was into production. Mm -hmm. Um I sang when I was a kid, I played yeah, instruments, sure. you know, sparingly here and there, right. you know, rap, I did, you know, all different types of things associated with music, so the passion was clearly there, um, but when I was in college and um, going to college where my mindset was, was more about the business side yeah. of the world and wanting to go towards Wall Street and uh, pursue my MBA and kind of have like a whole plan of like living in the finance world. Right. Um, and I think the reason uh, that changed was because when I was in college, I did a couple internships. One was in the film industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I did another one that was with the MBPA, which is a union for the NBA players. Yeah. Um, and, you know, these are kind of happenstance. It wasn't like I was, like, specifically looking for these opportunities. Yeah. Um, it was more like, well, I'm looking for internships, and, hey, these look like cool environments, so let me just try it. Right. Uh, and uh, it was – but the thing that was, you know, consistent or the, the, the theme was these were all in the entertainment area. Right, um, right. And, uh, you know, the, the one area of entertainment where I had not uh, pursued what was most passionate about was music. For sure. And so, you know, eventually I just said, hey, there's obviously something in me that keeps bringing me to these entertainment fields. Um, in my back of my mind, I had this plan to 
do the finance thing and go to Wall Street. But, you know, I keep finding myself in entertainment. I've never tried music. Let me just pursue it. For sure, definitely. So once you started getting involved in um, the music industry and the music business, um, was there a defining moment that kind of like switched in your head and you were like, you know what, this is where I want to be? Or has that moment ha- not happened yet or do you still not know like what your end goal is? Yeah, so I think, um, I think prior to trying to um, enter the music industry, there was kind of like, this is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I hit a crossroads where it was like, either from a go, I mean, you know, as you know, prior to like your junior year, going into senior year, right. uh, that, that summer internship is pretty critical, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, so at that point, as I was uh, coming out of my... I guess it'd be my junior, yeah, my junior year, uh, second semester. It was really the the point where I had to say, "Hey, am I gonna choose music or am I gonna go down the finance route?" Yeah. Um, if I'm going down the finance route, it's critical for me to get an internship over the summer. Yeah. Um, uh, if I'm gonna go the music route, it's critical for me to get an internship over the summer right. again to start networking. And, Absolutely. And you know, you know, build build. Uh, some footprints in the industry uh, and so at that point i decided hey you know the finest thing sounds cool but i want to go for music absolutely and i never looked back yeah uh, honestly uh so that was probably the, the most critical point um i think the second thing that happened um was you know my first internship was in the marketing department at asylum records okay um but then my second internship was at WIA, where I still work now, mm. in the digital department. And uh, to me, that was the perfect balance of business and music um, that I was really craving. Uh, and part of it, I think, also is that it was like the the other aspect of me that's like, I'm always interested on like what's the cutting edge, what's new in technology, like right. what's futuristic, what's coming down the, the pipeline. And this department was was focused on that. They were the ones like trying to figure out how to monetize ring- ringtones and yeah. digital downloads. And as the industry was going through transition, they were kind of the uh, the farm team, kind of at the forefront of the change. So definitely, and that kind of leads me into the into my next question here, which is: Do you think that um, at all during the time in your journey to where you are today, that you believe that persistence met luck at all? As in, did you ever feel like you see uh, that you know you got this digital you got this digital accounts um, internship and like you were saying that it, it was just exactly what we were looking for? Do you think that that was at all luck, or do you think that was persistence with your last internship with Warner in the marketing department? Yeah, I think it's both. I think it's both. I mean, uh, there's <clears throat> there's always a little bit of luck involved, right? Yeah, of um, you know, timing is everything. Yeah. Um, and, you know, sometimes you, you want to do something, but the timing isn't right. And, and unfortunately, that, that uh, you know, things won't work out. Yeah, of course. But, uh, I, I firmly believe that, uh, you know, luck does exist to some degree, mm-hmm. but it's also about preparation um, and persistence and then finding the right timing. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so I would say multiple times throughout my career that's been been the case um so whether it was you know the fact that i had you know kind of had a conversation with my hr kind of college uh you know administrator recruiter and let them know at one point i was like yeah you know i like the label environment it's kind of cool meeting a lot of people but you know i want to understand how they're fighting piracy because i just see people rampantly you know right (laughs) yeah definitely stuff illegally definitely definitely (laughs) And, you know, because I was proactive and had that conversation, she was like, hey, well, there's this group. I'm not 100% sure what they do, but I know where they are. You can, you know, have an informational interview over there and see what's happening. So I did that. And then after that, they were looking for an intern. So, you know, those those things kind of combined. But had I not been kind of persistent in at least identifying, you know, what was an interest to me? Yeah. Um, then you know maybe she never connects the dots, and maybe I stay in that marketing department. I said the marketing department wanted to have me back, uh, so yeah, you know maybe exactly. my, my career takes a completely different path. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would then say 
you know, I've moved around. So I started in New York, uh, worked there for two years. Mm-hmm. Then I moved to Atlanta, mm-hmm. uh, worked there for about six or seven years. And now I'm on the West Coast in Cali. And I've been here for about uh, about two and a half years. Sure. Uh, and with each of these moves, um, it hasn't been the company coming to me to say, hey, Marcel, will you take this new opportunity? It's been me kind of telling them, hey, here, here's where my life is going. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, I, I am obviously dedicated to the company. Um, I feel like I can perform my job uh, in another location. So, you know, please don't fire me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> how that chat goes, <laughs> right? Um, and I think in each of those opportunities, uh, it's been well received, uh, partially because... I, you know, let people know kind of a little bit in advance, like, you know, in advance notice of kind of where my mind is at and where my right. career, I see my career going and then also where my personal life is going. Definitely. Um, some of it is luck, of course, because, you know, in some instances, like an opportunity, like when I moved to the West Coast, for example, it had been a conversation that was ongoing um, and an opportunity opened up in our department because somebody left. Right. That was a West Coast based uh, role. And... You know, I jumped at I jumped at it, uh, and they gave me the flexibility to you know have about six months or so to figure out when I could actually relocate out there. And yeah. fortunately, I was able to do it within like two months. Yeah. Um, so again, I think it's it's both the timing aspect, but then also being you know persistent and yeah. um, being prepared to you know take on the next challenge. Definitely, yeah. So now uh, you mentioned your director of digital accounts in LA. Yep. Um, yep. If you had to look back on you know your path to where you are, you know we were just talking about having to relocate and everything. So what what skills and characteristics of yours do you think allowed you to be the most successful within your journey? Um, I think it's a couple things. One is uh, having exposure to many different accounts uh-huh. and. Um, just kind of having like a long tenure in the digital department, I've, I've literally seen everything. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> in one way or another. Yeah, um, most definitely. And so that's helpful just in terms of, you know, now that I'm managing people, I have two people directly reporting to me. Um, I'm able to give them guidance because I've been in the trenches. I, I know what they're facing. And a lot of times right. I've managed their accounts or dealt with the account reps that they're, that they're actually talking to on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. Um, so I can give them advice and, you know, help them come up with the, uh, you know, the most efficient or the, you know, the best path to, um, you know, resolving some of their issues. Uh-huh. Um, I think the other thing that has been helpful is just, you know, I, I did a stint where I, I was more of an operational role mm-hmm. um, doing revenue insurance, uh, which, to be completely honest, wasn't my, you know, my favorite thing to do All right. uh, uh, but you know I did it for multiple years and part of that was you know again uh, being prepared and, yeah. and you know being open to, to new new experiences yep. um, and so uh, one of the things that happened during that time was I was managing mobile accounts in Atlanta ringtones weren't evolving people weren't buying them anymore mm-hmm. you know we're seeing 50 percent year over year declines right i'm looking at my position in the company and realizing like hey you know at some point you know the rubber's going to beat the road uh and they may have to terminate me just because of the numbers and right. things go right so was presented with an opportunity to step into a new role um that was more operational and you know i, I think i have the background from the digital perspective yeah but didn't necessarily have all the, you know, internal royalties and kind right, of other right, knowledge. Right. Um, but I was open to it, uh, to, to stay within the company. And I think, you know, that experience has helped me now that I'm in the, in more of a more senior role because right. I have a broader perspective of how a particular decision will impact the company, both externally at their partners, but also internally and down to our artists. So, um, that's something unique that I bring to our group. Yeah, um, definitely. That not everybody else has, uh, you know, kind of knowledge or uh, perspective of. So yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, and did you make as far as far as you're concerned? Did you make any mistakes along the way? Um, as as you as you uh kind of carved throughout the industry, and uh, if so, what what were they? And looking back on them. 
if you made any, would you consider them important or crucial towards your success that you're seeing today? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely made mistakes along the way. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, one of, one of, I always say one of the things that's critical is to receive feedback from people as to, you know, why you didn't, uh, you know, get selected for a job, why yeah. something didn't work out, or, you know, just kind of get in that feedback loop so that you can improve things Definitely. as you move forward. Definitely. Uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, was one of the biggest lessons I learned uh, was as I was trying to enter into the industry, I'd interviewed for a position internally at WMG. I had got a recommendation from my internship supervisor, you know, kind of did all the right things, uh -huh. prepared for the interview, went to the interview, asked a bunch of questions, you know, performed well, did a right. thank you letter, all that kind of, you know, all the, checked all the boxes, if you will. Yeah, definitely. They didn't end up getting the opportunity, uh -huh. and I circled back with the uh, the person that was a hiring manager, and I just said, "Hey, you know, you know, I know you selected somebody else for this for this role. Um, you know, I hope that they do well. If you know, as I'm trying to improve my internship skill, my interview skills, and um, my overall candidacy for for other opportunities, can you share if there's any reason why you didn't select me versus somebody else?" Right. right. And she came back to me and said. Hey, thanks for reaching out, blah, blah, blah. I thought you were great. You know, you asked really good questions, so I knew that you, you know, cared about the industry, but she's like, I didn't feel that passion when I was talking to you. Uh -huh. um, and I think part of that, to me, was critical because what I learned is, one, I'm more of an even keel person, mm -hmm. so um, people can take that as, like, disinterested. Right. <laughs> so, uh, and then the second thing was that, you know, my perspective was a little bit jaded. Yes, I wanted a job, and I was on a job hunt, and, but then at the flip side, I was looking at, like, I'm going to be your assistant, I'm going to be answering your phones, right. I'm going to be, you know, yeah. going to getting you coffee and, and, and doing your expenses, like, it's not rocket science, I could do this, right. I'm not, like, jumping for joy for this opportunity, right? right? So, yeah, for sure. Uh, my perspective was a little bit jaded, but it was, it was, it was good to get that feedback, and it's something that I carry with me every day. When I yeah. prep for interviews for anything, I know, hey, you know, ramp up the passion, be energetic, because right. it, 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 people will notice and pick up on that cue. Oh, easily. And Absolutely. It's, and it's funny because now as I interview candidates for positions, um, it's something that I now look yeah. for, right? Because Absolutely. It's, it's very easy to tell the difference between somebody that's like, you know, super energetic and, and like really just want to be there. their all into right. the role just mm -hmm. to become, you know, whatever, right. <laughs> whatever yeah. role it is right. versus somebody that's kind of, you know, a little bit more, you know, laid back or, uh, you know, maybe not as interested in the role. Yeah. So, Definitely, definitely, absolutely. And those are skills that I'm trying to work on myself um, as I'm entering the industry, which is why I think it's, you know, I, I'm so thankful that I have the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, as you know, I just got back from the uh, from an internship fair in, in uh, New York City, and I'm trying to apply all these skills that I'm, I've learned from our conversation last year um, yeah. and stuff I did over the summer. I'm trying to apply the same stuff, so I definitely resonate with that. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, um, and then, ooh, oh, sorry about that. You know, I've made other mistakes in, in over time. I mean, I don't think anyone is – some of them were critical, some of them weren't. I mean, we all make mistakes, right? Yeah, uh, of course. I think, I think the general rule is, you know, my boss early on used to always tell me, you know, there's the 99-1 rule, right? You could be 99% of the time, but you fuck up that one time, and that's what people are going to remember. Yeah, right? definitely. So, you know, whether that's in, like, your personal life, you know, you got a girlfriend and everything's going great, and then, you know, you forget her birthday or something, yeah. it's like you're in, the, you're in the doghouse for the rest of the year, right? Yeah, <laughs> yep. So, uh, you know, it's, it's true in life, it's true in the professional life, so it's just that constant strive for perfection. Definitely. Um, last question for you. Um, whenever you were faced with a task or a problem or just, you know, you, you were faced with, with something that you had to put in a little bit of extra thought um, into into that. What was your way of resolving the issue most effectively and efficiently? Yeah, so um, I think there's there's several paths, and it depends on what the problem is, right? Mm -hmm. um, in some instances, I think particularly because our roles are so day-to-day, -day, there's so much, like, 
there's so many balls that you're juggling, right. particularly when you're managing multiple accounts, there's multiple releases. Some sometimes it's literally just carving out the time to say, hey, I'm not gonna have any distractions. I'm just gonna focus on this one problem yeah. and think through the potential solutions. You know, after you have that plan together, you know, step away from it for a bit, come back to it and say, hey, is there anything I'm missing here? Right. 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 So I think that is like the first thing that's like really hard to do which is like turning off the brain uh, of any other anything else that's going on and focusing on one issue mm. um the other thing is getting additional perspective right so uh you know we all don't know everything uh -huh. um there's other people that have either in, encountered things um previously and if not the same exact problem just may have a point of view on how things could be done better right and so i always lean on those that um have a wealth of experience within our company. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have monthly meetings with executives just to honestly pick their brains and yeah. see, like, okay, like, hey, I mean, it may not be a specific issue, it just maybe something that may come up down the line. Right. How would you handle this, right? right? Or, you know, um, what's your approach to, you know, time management because we're all, Definitely. you know, crunch for time. Definitely. Um, so those are things that. I try to do all the time mm -hmm. so that uh, I am well prepared if, if I do run into a particular scenario. But if it's something that's just incredibly difficult, sometimes it's just, you know, figuring out who the right people are, getting them in a room yeah. or on a call, and putting the, thing, putting the issue on the table, at least having some type of point of view or plan uh, as to how you would address it, right. but then be willing to get other people's perspectives. Definitely. Um, I think the the important part is to do that first part, which is do some investigation on your own and come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. um, because I think if you just throw something out there, then you know, and you don't feel like you're invested in in, in coming to a solution, then other people are going to be invested in coming to a solution, right? Right. right. And it's also harder to critique something uh, when you're starting from scratch versus if there's already an idea out there, there's like, yeah. no, this isn't the right idea, or it's like, oh, this could be improved upon, you're kind of in the right direction. Right. Absolutely. Um, well, that was, those are all my questions. Um, Marcel, I, again, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Um, no, of course. Yeah, I mean, this stuff, is, this content is definitely great, and I'll be able to apply it to um, my project about you know, my hopefully uh, one day achieving the success that you have um, succeeded and uh, or that you have achieved. And um, we will see what happens with the uh, 